All right, this video is about types of monopolies. Okay, so this goes with um, the market structures uh, chart that we uh, did in class based off of the book. Um, <laughs> there are four specific types of monopolies that I want to talk about. So the first type of monopoly is um, we call a natural monopoly. And a natural monopoly is going to be, um, like it says, where the cost of production is lower when there's only one producer. So what we're saying is, is that it's, cheaper to only have one company make this product. Um, what happens is, is that, for example, if you're talking about uh, an electric company, okay, so uh, somebody who provides electricity to a general area, in order to provide uh, electricity, they have to run a bunch of wires. And so you have those big, huge electric towers that are going through the area, uh, running down the sides of streets, and they have to run the wires and going into your house, and all of this stuff that goes in providing electricity to individual homes and businesses and the reason that's cheaper to have only one company do that is because if you had another company do that you would then have that other company is going to have to go and um, provide their own um, electric uh, provide their own towers provide their own cables and it would just cost us more the consumer so it's actually cheaper to just have one company do it because they will pay for it all and then it will they can easily recoup the cost because they'll have a whole bunch of consumers they'll easily recoup the costs um, and then they don't have to pay for that again they just have to pay for the upkeep whereas if you introduce a new company they have to put in all that new stuff and it's just going to cost more money now this also leads us to this idea of economies of scale. And economies of scale fits with a natural monopoly, but it can also fit with other industries as well. Economies of scale is the idea that the cost of producing something actually drops, it gets lower as the producer gets bigger. So as they get to be a bigger and bigger company, it's cheaper for them to produce things. Uh, for example, uh, when Apple first started um, producing computers, okay, that very first computer that they produced, um, they, uh, it took them a lot to be able to produce that one computer. Um, and so they, it took them a lot to be able to produce that one computer and then um, they could, you know, duplicate it a couple of times, but they didn't, just, they, they were a small company, they couldn't afford to make very many computers. So the computers they did make, they had to sell them for like over $600, okay? But as they grew as a company, they were able to afford to make more computers. And because they already had one prototype, they could go and then um, just basically copy it um, very easily, very cheaply. So the economies of scale, okay, in that instance of Apple, I'm not saying Apple is a monopoly, but what I am saying is that economies of scale fits with um, something that isn't a monopoly because um, it's going to make it cheaper for when they actually get bigger. Now in the case of natural monopolies it fits for like for example the electric company um, the uh, when the company gets bigger and for example they can provide service to more people they can spread out that cost of those um, towers that they had to put up initially. So that's why um, in the case of a natural monopoly it's actually a good thing and it's it's not a bad thing to have a natural monopoly. You don't want to have more than one electric company because it's just going to cost you more because they're going to have to put up all those towers again. So. Uh, examples, like I said, um, the electric company, so they have to uh, run all of these towers here, okay? Other examples, natural monopoly, um, railroad uh, companies, uh, when they initially started, uh, there was a company that, you know, they had to go in, they had to lay the actual track, um, and again, the um, more widespread the railroad was, uh, it dropped the price for the consumer because they are, were, um, marketing it to more uh, people and so they could spread the cost out among more people a lot easier. So the idea of a natural monopoly is basically that it's cheaper to only have one producer and it's cheaper because um, they can spread the cost um, of their high cost items, their startup costs, among a lot of different people. All right, second type of monopoly is what we call a government monopoly. And a government monopoly is when the government owns and runs a specific industry. So it's just like what it sounds.
Okay, now the reason this is is because the government provides the product uh, because the firms, uh, the private firms don't want to do this. Uh, if you remember back to, I think it was chapter 3 when we talked about public goods and we said that the reason governments don't provide public goods is because it's, or the reason why uh, private companies don't provide public goods is simply because it's not profitable for them. Um, they can't restrict um, who has access to things. Um, when they're a public good. Once you put it out there, you can't take it back. So a government monopoly includes those ideas of public goods. Okay, so examples include, um, this is a picture in, uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's a map actually, um, and I don't remember how much you remember from U.S. history, but way back in the uh, 1930s when uh, President uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was trying to get the economy rolling again. He did a whole bunch of things um, where basically he did a bunch of government spending and one of the things that he did was is he tried to create jobs and one of the areas he tried to create jobs was in this area. I don't remember if you remember the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority. This group provided electricity to the Tennessee Valley area. Um, so this is a map of the Tennessee Valley area. They provided electricity to them that in the 30s they didn't have any electricity in this area um, and uh, to this day the government still runs the electric company in that area so that's an example of government monopoly another example the postal service now everybody says well wait okay but we I can get you know, packages from um, you know FedEx or UPS or DHL or whatever but the Postal Service is the only one that will provide to you, um, for example, basic letters, okay? Um, and for a very, very low cost compared to, for example, um, UPS or FedEx if you wanted to sell and send just like a basic letter. So those are examples of government-run monopolies. All right, third type of monopoly is what we call a technological monopoly. A technological monopoly is when a, gov a company controls the manufacturing method, um, an invention, or some any type of technology. Um, so everybody thinks of um, you know actual um, circuitry and things like that, but it can also be a manufacturing method, um, or it could be um, an advancement, um, like for example, um, drugs. Um, you can have a, a drug monopoly, uh, prescription drugs, by the way. So usually this results from a patent. And the patent is this exclusive right um, to a specific invention or a process for a specific number of years. So um, if you've ever seen advertisements where they're talking about talking to inventors, they're like, make sure you patent your invention. Okay. This is creating a technological monopoly. So, um, you know, those, uh, for example, uh, I always remember, I think of the infomercials like Ron Co, Ron Popeil with his, his little inventions that he made. Some of them weren't so little, but like I still remember the food dehydrator. Um, and he was the first one that had this this uh, food dehydrated that had these stackable trays and things okay so he was the only one that produced that or for example when the snug uh, what's what's the snuggly um, first came out that uh, wearable blanket um, you know you that was a patent and somebody had a patent on that they came up with the idea they patented they were the only ones that sold it now that doesn't mean that that they're necessarily going to be successful it just means that they're the only ones that have the right to sell that and it's only for a specific number of years so what you will find is is that after the patent expires you'll have a whole bunch of generics that will pop in okay so examples of technological monopolies Claritin, like I said, prescription drugs. Claritin originally started off as a prescription drug um, and it was um, protected under the patent laws um, and it was a good allergy medication. Okay, and you could only get it for a prescription. Then the patent ran out and now they have a whole bunch of new generics that you can just get over the counter. Okay, so at the time, they had a monop technological monopoly on Claritin. Now they don't because the patents run out. Other examples, some people argued that Microsoft had a uh, technological monopoly for a while um, because uh, they were the only operating system that was being installed on computers. Um, people really weren't using Apple. Um, some people also said that uh, they had a technological monopoly um, on 
um, the internet browser. So like when you go to surf the internet on your computer, um, Internet Explorer came preloaded on computers and you really didn't have any other options. And then lastly, Polaroid. I don't know if you're too young to remember these cameras, okay, but uh, the Polaroid Instant Camera, this was an example they gave in the book, um, I thought it was kind of cute, uh, but if you remember those cameras where you took a picture and this, it printed it out right away, and originally it was black, and you had to like shake the little picture, and it would like develop in your hand, and at the time, it was revolutionary, and people were amazed by what you could do, and just like, wow, uh, Obviously now, not such a big deal. Polaroid has since gone out of business. But the Polaroid um, camera had a patent that was protecting it, and so no other camera was like that. Uh, other cameras just had film, and you had to take it to somebody else to be developed. That was a unique thing at the time. All right, the last type of monopoly I want to talk about is a geographic monopoly. A geographic monopoly is when there's only one seller in a specific area. Now, the area could be small, the area could be large, but you only have one seller in that area. So sometimes uh, an area is just too small to support more than one provider of a particular product. Um, so sometimes, like I said, if it's a small area, like if you're talking about a small town, um, or if you're talking about you know a very rural area, it may be large geographically, but there's just not enough people to support more than one provider of a particular product. So examples of this, I know you've seen these when you've drive when you've been driving around, if you've driven around the country. Uh, for example, one gas station, this one lone gas station in this tiny little town. You want gas, it's the only place you have you you have to go. Um, and geographic monopolies um, only exist as long as there's only one seller. So you could potentially um, ruin the geographic by now, monopoly by having another gas station, but the question is, can the area support another gas station? Would there be enough business? Uh, another example, um, if you've ever driven the toll road um, on the northern part of the state, uh, anything around Chicago, uh, the toll road is kind of interesting because it provides geographic monopolies along the toll road. I, t I had this picture specifically because it's talking about this exit and this oasis. You have one gas station, you have McDonald's for food, okay? It's a geographic monopoly because if you want gas, like for example, you're on E, you have one option there, okay? That's it, okay? Now, depending upon how much gas you have left in your tank, you could potentially go down the road to the next oasis, but as you know, uh, the problem with toll roads is you have very um, limited exits, right? So without paying to exit the toll road. So that's why it's a geographic monopoly. And then lastly, thinking um, larger scale in the United States, professional sports te uh, sports leagues, like for example the NFL, provides a geographic monopoly. Because, think about it, okay, if you want to have a um, professional football team, you have to go through the NFL. There's no other options. You have to go through the NFL. You cannot have any other professional football team. Same thing with other professional um, sports leagues, okay? Um, so um, the NHL for hockey or the NBA for basketball, um, you have to go through them if you want to form a team. All right, that's three, the uh, four major types of monopolies. Uh, hopefully everybody understands the four types um, and the examples. Let me know if you have any questions.